And our next uh, presenter is Chris Shaffrey from the University of Virginia. Thank you, Matt. I'd like to thank the WNS for allowing us this opportunity to prevent, uh, present our data. And these are my disclosures. Lumbar disc herniation is the most common indication for spine surgery in the United States for people having back or leg pain. And modern series have documented an overall complication rate, which ranges somewhere between 1.5 and 15 percent. And determining accurate complication rates is quite important for patient counseling, for quality improvement, and for medical legal issues. The Scoliosis Research Society has collected surgical case data from members since 1965. The members are predominantly fellowship-trained spine surgeons. And the members commit and attest to providing prospectively acquired and collected data of consecutive spine surgical cases to enroll in the database. And the parameters collect, included in this collection include perioperative and early postoperative morbidity and mortality. Our goal was to assess the incidence of complications associated with the surgical treatment of primary lumbar microdiscectomy in a large population of patients, and then to compare the incidence of these complications with prior literature as a means of validating the SRA database. In this database, the years 2004 to 2007 were analyzed, and these were surgically treated primary lumbar disc herniations. Cases with concurrent fusion were excluded, as were recurrent disc herniations. And it's important to note for these patients, the patient, surgeon, and institutional data was de-identified. A total of 100, 108,000 surgical cases were enrolled in this database between 2004 and 2007, and uh, 9,600 uh, cases of primary lumbar discectomy were identified. The mean age of these patients was 43 years. A particularly note, minimally invasive or minimal, ac minimal access discectomies were performed in 37% of these cases. Broken down by membership status, and in this case, candidate members are generally people within their first seven years of practice. Uh, these, de these cases were performed in 21 percent, and full members pr uh, performed 72 percent of the total cases. So these, are, these are members with more experience. Now, when we look at the overall complication rate of primary discectomy, complications occurred in 3.6 percent of cases. The most, common case, uh, the most common causes of complication were dural tear, which was 45 percent of the total complications, uh, deep wound infection, which was 10% of uh, the complications, superficial wound infection, which was 13%, and neurological deficit, which occurred in 10% of cases. When we analyzed the dural tears, these occurred in 1.6% of the total, uh, total, com uh, total complications, uh, pardon me, total cases, and these uh, occurred more frequently on analysis in those patients older than 50 years of age compared to those younger than 58 years of age. Wound infection, which occurred in slightly less than 1% of total cases, was almost equally divided between superficial and deep wound infection, and there was no statistical difference between those patients under or over 50 years of age. Similarly, neurological deficit, which occurred in 3 in 1,000, uh, occur equally between age groups. Now, when we look more closely at the neurological deficits, there was one case of spinal cord injury, which occurred at an L1-2 level discectomy. This had a partial recovery. There was one case of caudal quadrant syndrome, which resulted from a uh, immediate uh, epidural abscess, uh, which uh, epidural hematoma, which had a partial recovery. And as far as nerve root injuries, uh, the uh, majority of these received partial recovery, with partial recovery occurring in 73% of cases. When we looked at delayed neurological deficit, and these were all exclusively in cases who developed epidural hematomas, uh, again, these were split between people having complete and partial recoveries, and there were five total. As we look at, uh, look at a variety of other complications, epidural hematomas occurred in 11 patients, and there were a variety of other less common complications. This is in our other category. The single most uh, common other complication was recurrent disc herniation, and this occurred in approximately 5 in 1,000 cases within the first 30 days. Now, when we look at the, uh, the incidence of complication by membership status, which could be used as a surrogate for experience, it was found that, uh, that there were more complications in, in, in the candidate members, but it did not quite reach statistical significance. When we look at individual complications, the incidence between the uh, younger and older surgeons uh, was uh, similar for durotomy, similarly, similar for infection, 
and similar for uh, neurological deficit. When we look, however, at uh, complications based by surgical approach, we found that there was a significantly uh, reduced incidence of complications of those patients undergoing surgery by a minimal access or minimally invasive approach. Looking at this uh, in a more detailed manner, the differences in durotomy were similar statistically, and they were similar for neurological deficit. And the vast majority of the difference between open and minimally invasive surgery occurred with the incidence of infection where there was a marked reduction in infection in those patients who had minimal access procedures compared to open procedures. When we break it down between superficial infections, it was still statistically significant, but you can see the profound difference in deep wound infections which occurred between open and minimal access procedures. Now, comparing our series with, uh, with previous recent publications, including that presented in the sport data, the incidence of durotomy is very similar uh, and right in the mid-range of, of, of all recent series. It's almost exactly the same as the uh, sport data. Similarly, the incidence of infection is, is midway in the range of all recently reported series, and yet again compared to that of, the, uh, of that recently reported by Weinstein in the, in the sport trial. The incidence of neurological deficit, again, similarly uh, uh, lays in the mid-range of the uh, previously reported series. The mortality in this group was zero. Again, was very similar to the vast majority of previously reported uh, studies looking at primary discectomy. Now, this study has some limitations. Although the data collected and entered, was entered prospectively, the analysis and study design were performed retrospectively. This surgical database from the, uh, from the SRS m and is primarily designed to capture surgical complications and major medical complications, and it is clear that minor med medical complications are significantly underestimated. And there's no method to verify the completeness of data submission. This is purely by surgeon attestation that they had completed their uh, data forms accurately. Now, the overall complication rate for primary lumbar microdiscectomy was 3.6% in over 9,000 cases. The most common complications were durotomy, wound infection, and neurological deficit. And there was a non-significant trend towards candidate members having increased complication rate. MIS surgery had clearly a lower infection rate compared with open surgery with a very large number of patients included in this database. Now, the overall complication rate and rates of surgical complications were comparable to other major uh, pre uh, previous reports. And I feel this provides some initial validation of the SRS m and database. The large size of the SRS uh, m and database can serve as a tool to evaluate complications of far less commonly performed procedures, and hopefully this study will give some added credence to this database as an aggregate tool. Finally, as we develop in the neurosurgery community uh, tools such as the NeuroPoint Alliance, lessons learned from the development of the m and database can hopefully be used as a driver to improve our efforts. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Dan Resnick will be our discussant. Uh, good morning. It's my pleasure to um, to comment on the uh, study. If I just have my slides up. Okay. So this uh, this uh, study was uh, an excellent example of what can be done with cooperation within a medical society. And the database constructed by the Scoliosis Research Society really does serve as a model for what we may, we may be able to accomplish on our own side of things. Uh, in terms of the results of the study. The authors noted a 3.6% uh, complication rate, and the types of complications were presented by Dr. Shaffrey. This information is important uh, when we discuss these, cases, discuss these cases with patients and are very important in terms of ad advocacy issues, such as uh, demonstrating that the infection rate for lumbar surgery is, in fact, not zero, even when performed by very competent uh, uh, surgeons uh, across the country. There are a couple of caveats that need to be, uh, that need to be raised about the data. Uh, the first off, uh, Dr. Shaffrey mentioned that this is not an audited database and that there is no way to assure that all cases and all complications are being entered into the, into the database. Uh, this will become more important as uh, the uh, attributes of uh, registries that are uh, acceptable for maintenance of certification 
and for uh, Centers of Excellence program and quality improvement uh, efforts uh, uh, continues. Uh, secondly, the, although there was a large number of uh, lumbar discectomies performed, the overall percentage of uh, cases that were lumbar discectomies was only 8.9%. Most of us who do spine surgery who aren't deformity surgeons do a much higher uh, percentage of our uh, lumbar discectomy represents a much higher percentage of our, of our practice. So the data that we're discussing really is a small part of the practice of most of the practitioners in, in, in this database, which, which may have something to do with the results. And finally, I think the uh, um, uh, statement that the infection rate is lower and minimally in incisional surgery may or may not be true. This was an observed phenomenon in this study, but there are many factors related to who gets selected for minimally, incis minimally incisional surgery and who's doing the minimally incisional surgery that probably are more important than the technique in itself. Uh, overall, I think that the, uh, that the effort of the Scoliosis Research Society in constructing this database, in administering that database, and using it to develop um, Normative uh, information is extremely uh, uh, praiseworthy and valuable, and uh, it's been my uh, uh, pleasure to, uh, to, to review the paper. Thank you.